my channel. Today I'm going to build $650 PC, mainly focusing on video editing, but also you can play light gaming. Let's not wait, let's do it now. I am going to discuss three topics today. Uh, first topic is what kind of components that I have used to build this PC and its price. Secondly, we're going to go into uh, step by step on how to build the PC. Thirdly, we're going to do a quick performance test to see how it performs. Let's go into the first topic. Let me share what other component for my $650 PC build. Uh, let's start with CPU. I went with Ryzen 5 3600 from AMD for 155 bucks. Personally, I think it is the best CPU for the money at this time. Uh, this CPU comes with stock cooler, so you don't have to buy them separately. What is important to watch out is the socket type. So as you can see, it is the AM4 socket, which tells you that motherboard with AM4 socket will work with the CPU. Uh, let's move to the motherboard. I have decided to buy you know, B450M Pro 4 micro ATX board from ASRock. Simply, it is affordable and it seems like it has a really good review. So far, I had no issue using it. What's good thing about this is that you can save $20 when you bundle with motherboard and CPU at Micro Center. So I have decided to buy one from Micro Center. Uh, you have to visit their own store. So if their store is not near you, try to find a great deal by searching it online. Let's move to uh, memory. The current sweet spot for the price and performance is at DDR4 with 3200 MHz speed. You can find two sticks of 8GB memory for low as $60. But I had a great experience with Corsair memory, so I purchased one for $70. I'll recommend you to buy two sticks of 8GB memory instead of one stick with 16GB. Next uh, is the graphic card. My focus for building this PC is of, of video editing as well as play like gaming. So I think GTX 1650 Super was a good option for about $170. If you are playing games that needs really high performance, I would recommend you to upgrade your graphic card. Next topic is the power supply. I have a two power supplies from EVGA and currently have no issue with it. So I pick up this one for 50 bucks. I was looking for the affordable one. But if you are able to spend extra 19 bucks, I would recommend you to buy this one because it's a semi-modular, which means you don't need to use the wires that you don't need. Trust me, it will make you much easier to organize your wires while building your PC later. Let's move into the storage. So I went with 480 gigabyte SSD from PNY. I'm using it because I had one at home, but it is good storage for 48 bucks at uh, Amazon. Let's move to the case. I went with Gamdia's Talos E1's mini ITX tower. Uh, I picked up this one because I like the design. It has a tempered glass on the side and front, and also it has a two built-in RBG fans uh, for 60 bucks. I think it's a good value for the price. You need to pay attention to your mini ITX tower, which means it will only work with the smaller motherboard like what we have purchased. Lastly, let's go into the fans. Basically, this is pretty affordable option. I just wanted to add more RGB fan to the ones that came with the case. It's a decent fan for its price. Total came out to be about $633. So it's very close to $650 budget that we have. Uh, this is without tax. I'll be sharing this list on the description section. Okay, let's move to the stage two uh, step-by-step -step guide on how to build the PC. When you open up the motherboard box, there are a lot of parts inside. First, uh, you're gonna find an IO shield, which is gonna fit uh, into back of your case. SATA cables uh, that connects your SSD to your motherboard two M.2 screws and a manual and CD with drivers for your motherboard. Uh, this motherboard has an AM4 socket specifically made for AMD processors Ryzen generation 1 through 3. First, we're going to install our CPU into the motherboard. When you unbox the CPU, you're going to find the uh, stock cooler inside. 
as well as uh, CPU itself. Take out the CPU from its packaging. Be really careful not to bend any pins below. First, uh, you lift up the arm from the socket. Look very close here. This is very important. Make sure you align the arrow on the CPU to the uh, arrow in the uh, AM4 socket in the motherboard. Once it's aligned, don't pressure anything. Just leave it on the top and it will just go ahead and uh, place itself into the socket. No pressure required. And then close the arm. And that's it. Now let's uh, install the memory. So first you take out the memory out from each box and you're going to see a two sticks. First thing first, you have to open up the uh, memory slot, follow that red arrow, and then align the memory with its slot in the yellow circle. Once that's aligned, go ahead and press down the uh, memory until you hear this. Next, let's install the CPU fan. So first, we have to take out the bracket that came with the motherboard. So let's unscrew it. And there are four screws there. And then go ahead and unbox CPU fan that came uh, with the CPU. There should be a, a grease that should be already applied on there. And let's align the screws between motherboard and the CPU fan and go ahead and screw four of them on there. Once that's done, go ahead and uh, put the uh, four pin fan into the motherboard. Let's look at the case before we install the motherboard into it. When you unscrew the left side, there is a glass panel. Glass door that could be detachable. You can hear it. it's a real glass. And it also has a detachable front. Good thing about this case is it has a two fan included. It's a RBG fan. And also the front panel is a real glass too. So it looks really nice when you put everything together. Uh, it's, it has a very, uh, lots of glasses into the case. On the top, uh, there is detachable mesh cover. If you look at the other side, um, yeah, you, there is two screw, screws. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty normal. Yeah, it's just a somewhat good size metal metal plate. Okay, if you look closer on this side, there is a RBG controller included with the case, and also it has a three-pin uh, connector to the motherboard and two power connector for the. Uh, RBG fans. Okay, uh, let's talk about the wires. There are three thick wires. That is the uh, USB 3.0 connector. That is the HD audio. And third one is USB 2.0 connector. Also, there is a uh, you know, front panel controller. Uh, power switch and so on. Go ahead and put the screws that I'm showing on the left uh, top corner to the eight places that are circled in yellow. It is a standoff that you put motherboard on top of it. Some motherboards have them pre-installed.
So check it out before you install it. Before you put in your motherboard into the case, uh, first thing we need to put in IO shield that came with the motherboard. This is very sharp, so you make sure you wear uh, gloves. Now once that's completed, align your motherboard into the IO shield, just like what I'm showing right now. Go ahead and put the screws to put uh, your motherboard locked down into the uh, case. Go ahead and do that to all eight locations that was circled yellow previously. Once that's completed, go ahead and put all the uh, wires into that little hole on the top right corner in yellow so that none of the wires can be uh, in front. So we are organizing it before we uh, put the connectors into the motherboard. Our first connectors that we're going to connect to the motherboard is the uh, front panel controllers. So we're going to bring in three wires from the back to the front. Our first wire uh, that we're going to connect to is the uh, a hard disk LED lights. We're going to connect it uh, as it's showing on the left picture. The second uh, wire that we're going to put in is the power LED lights. So we're going to place it uh, as it's showing on the white picture. And the lastly, we're going to put the power switch. So basically, these switches are directly connected to the front panel for you to uh, turn on the computer. Let's connect a USB 3.1 uh, connector. Go ahead and organize it well. Wires are there are a lot of wires. Go ahead and put uh, the connector into that hole. In the front, we're going to go ahead and plug in the 3.1 port that's showing on the left picture. We are also going to connect the HD audio and the uh, USB 2.0 connector. Uh, we're going to Connect the uh, USB 2.0 first. As shown on the picture, circled in uh, yellow. And the uh, HD audio port, which is on the left bottom pin. Okay, let's install the power supply. Basically, take it out from the box. Uh, make sure the fan side is going towards the bottom. Okay, go ahead and uh, put all the wires uh, in the back. As you can see, I'm using the non-modular one, but I have listed out the uh, semi-modular one for you. Uh, in small case, it's hard to fit everything. Go ahead and screw in. The power supply, as you can see, there is four screws. Put it in there. Okay, it looks nice, right? There, front side is clean. Now, you're gonna pull out the CPU pin and put it to the front and also uh, ATX uh, power cable. It's pretty big, so it's hard to stick it into the hole. But just go ahead. Okay, uh, now you have the CPU cable out in the front. Go ahead and plug that in to the motherboard. And also Go ahead and plug in the ATX power uh, pins, which is pretty large, so you can't miss it. Yep. Yep, go ahead and push it. And 
now we're going to install the SSD. So as you can see that cable came with the motherboard. Okay, go ahead and plug that in to the motherboard. And then go ahead and put the other side in the back again. So you have a very clean look in the front. Now you plug that into your SSD. Okay, you do the same thing for the power. Yeah. Take out the wire and then plug that into the SSD. Okay. Pull all the wires to the back and then you position your SSD. That's it for SSD installation. Now, let's look at the RVG fan. Okay, it has the screws and fans. If you look at it, you know, what's included in the box? There are three fans and a screw. We have a remote control. And also there is the uh, controller, which you can put 10 bands connected and there is a power connector. Okay, let's uh, install the fan into the case. Okay, there is uh, screws included in the box, go ahead and screw that in. Same thing for the second fan. Yep, screw that in. Okay, looks nice. Okay, now we're gonna install the fan in the back side. Okay. Pretty simple, straightforward. Now, let's work on RBG controller. Go ahead and connect all three RBG fan wires to the controller that came with it. Here comes the tricky part. There are two RBG controllers since Case also has one. Since two controllers are different brands, I had to make customization to make it work. I am going to use the controller that I bought separately as a main controller since it has the remote control. So let's connect them together. When you look at the RBG controller that came with the case, there is a connector look like what is showing on the screen. It should say letter V, D, G on it. Goal here is to connect D, which stands for data, wire to fourth pin from the left on the main controller which is also data that way main controller can send data to case controller so that all five rbg fans can work simultaneously it's not supposed to be fitted in there so it's gonna be a little loose so don't try to push it in too hard uh, let's tape it so that it can stay into its place. Once that is done, let's put it into the case. Last part to install is the uh, graphic card. As you can see, you have uh, three uh, ports, uh, one HDMI, one display, and one DVI port. Uh, let's take out the cover. Now I'll go ahead and plug in the graphic card. As you can see, uh, you have to align the slot. Gently push it down. And go ahead and screw in uh, into the case. Now you have to plug in the power. 
GPU power connector should say PCI Express power is the 6 pin that goes into the graphic card go ahead and install that now you connect everything uh, I have closed the back plate all you have to do is close the glass panel congrats guys you have just finished building a PC now all you need to do is install the windows from here I will share another video on how to install the windows and also update the BIOS settings on the next video. For now, let's move to the last section. Let's play Overwatch with Ultra settings. I'm constantly getting average FPS of 122, so I think it is decent performance of having entry level graphic card. I think this game is well optimized too. If you compromise some settings, this game will work well 144Hz uh, gaming monitor with this uh, PC setup. For the Valorant, um, also works really well on this computer. I don't think you need to compromise any settings as FPS is way over 144. One enemy remaining. Wow, I just got a 2 kill. On the fire strike score, I was able to get 12k graphic and 19k CPU. Which means there is a room for you to upgrade your graphic card as CPU has a higher score. And this goes same for the time spy. For this build, I think I'm very satisfied with the performance. That is it for today. Your support is really important. If you have any comments, leave it below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.